Wait, 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 wait. Did he say she went out and bought an automobile, a car on his credit card? Who goes and buys a car on a credit card? Oh, she tripping. She tripping on that. Hey guys, it's your girl Melanie. And today I'm going to be reacting to a reaction. And this comes from Graham Stephan. And if you don't know, he is like a money guy, real estate guy. I've been, I've watched him on and off throughout the years. Really smart young guy who's, you know, I think he makes about $6 million a year. And he became a millionaire at 26 and he's like a consummate cheapskate. Okay. Like he is a guy who was always saving money. I need to learn a lot from him. But anyway, we're going to be taking a look at he uh, at a review he did on My Fiancé is a Gold Digger. And it comes from the TLC show 90 Day Fiancé. So let's get into it. Welcome back to the Graham Stephan Show. So lately, the YouTube algorithm started pushing this content on me. It's called 90 Day Fiancé. Now, for those who aren't familiar with it, it's basically where two almost complete strangers have to get married in 90 days. Otherwise, the other person doesn't get a green card. Now, naturally, that leads to a disaster of a scenario where they get in fights. They realize the person they're about to marry isn't the person they thought they were. It's just bad news. Now, normally, I wouldn't click on a video like this, but... This guy's got a Ford GT, and so do I. So from one Ford GT owner to another, I'm going to give you relationship advice. So this is interesting. So he is a money guy, but he's now going to give relationship advice. And I'm more in the relationship sphere, and I'm about to give, well, I guess relationship advice too, so I'm capping. But anyway, I don't know if the, how expensive this car is. In fact, let, let me look it up really quickly. Oh my gosh, guys, so I'm even calling it wrong. It is a $500,000 car? It's a half a million dollars? What in the world? And ones that are vintage, this one that's vintage went for $12 million? What? Okay, let's get back to the video. <laughs> we'll see, we'll, we'll see what happens, enjoy. All right, so uh, already she is uh, half his age. Uh, what's the saying? It's it's half your age plus eight. Is is that the recommended rule of thumb? Half age. Oh, half the age plus seven. So already she's below the rule. Hey, sweetie, are you ready? Yes. You look great. I'm gonna take Juliana out for a little spin. No, I don't know where he lived. Did it say, did it say where he lived? I, I didn't quite pay attention. Maybe if he lives in like Connecticut or New York, New Jersey, someplace like that, maybe maybe in California, um, I could see this house. But being it, but a half a million dollar plus car, this does not look like that kind of house that you would expect that expensive car coming out of. So something right off the bat for me is not sitting right. Unless he's in one of these places, one of these uh, areas where like even like a basic house costs a couple million dollars. But why are you, why do you have a car that expensive in this very basic suburban house? Like the furniture doesn't look lit. Like it looks kind of messy in the background. I, they gonna have me calling cap in a second. I see it now. He lives in Greenwich, Connecticut. So Greenwich is a very expensive place. So he could have money and this house just looks basic because the, it's just the, the how things cost there. But I still don't think the car matches the place in the front. The furniture looks dated. Like it's just not, I'm into interior design. It just don't, it ain't something ain't sitting, it, it ain't sitting right. But how about let's talk about how mad his ex-wife is. <laughs> That he got a baddie. He got a baddie, y'all. She probably ripping her hair out. Mad as I don't know what that, that he 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 got he pulled one. Mm -hmm. All of the loves of my life into one place at once is awesome. Oh man, that's the other love of his life, is this Ford GT to bring all of these together with his family, his uh, new fiance the Ford GT. And the funny thing is we have the exact same color combination, the white with the blue stripes. Now I'm curious if he has the red painted calipers. That's the only thing this needs. Graham stay flexing, right? He flexing with this car. We get it, Graham. You got money now. We we get it. Us, uh, you, you flexing on us. You know what would be funny if I ended up buying his car? If like something happened with him and like a divorce, he had to sell the car, like I bought this car. I don't think so though. That would be funny if it was his. I think Michael Carr is a badass. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, I gotta point out this house. 
this um this color combination with the yellow, the green, and the pink curtains, Juliana, girl, you are not representing the Brazilian women very well. Please get this is this looks so is this a fake background? Cause they need to pawn that car off, sell that car and get some get some grown furniture. This looks like like a Barbie dream house type place. Like, I'm sorry, y'all. I just I just can't stand. I can't stand people who buy have expensive cars or they have, a, a, you know, jewelry or anything like that. And then I come in and your furniture, not restoration hardware level. I can't work with you. I, I just can't. I can't. We, we gonna have to fix it all. I'm sorry. It's so cool. Yeah, exactly. That, that is a badass car. I like it. This looks so cool. It's kind of odd to me that it's like not the car that I would imagine in this garage with this guy. You know, it's like usually, you, I don't, I don't want to say anything bad. It's just you wouldn't think that's quite a family car, like a guy with two kids and, a, and what looks to be a moderate house. And then you pull up the garage, there's a Ford GT sitting there. Wow. Graham, Graham is not trying to say it, but you know your girl will. I'm sorry, like, look at this garage, bro. Like, and then you have this 500,000 plus car in this very, nothing wrong with the house, but this car is not equaling up. Something, it just don't look right. I don't know, like, upgrade the house, not the car, but I guess the car pulls ch chicks, but he he probably pulled Juliana through, like, passport. So I, I, I don't know, I don't know. It ain't working get my license but i don't want to drive then i want to drive my own car <laughs> because if something happened oh my god what did you do with my car at least she's conscious of that it's like I mean, it would be even worse if she just wants to drive the ford gt and doesn't care what happens to it after sarah and i got a divorce i found a really nice two bedroom close to town but we have outgrown it so we have decided to buy a house and it's time to look for Oh, see, he doesn't have the red painted calipers. So I already know that's that's not my car. It's time to look for some furniture. That's okay, so is that the apartment we're looking at? But then it has a garage, so that has to be a house. Or maybe it's a two-bedroom house. So, okay. So maybe it was a rental that he just had after his divorce. And the house he's going to buy is going to equal the car. Okay. This is making better sense. This is I, I, I take back what I said, but not completely till I see to the end. That's the worst car to drive to go furniture shopping. First of all, you never want the salesperson to know you got money. If they see you pulling up in that car, they're automatically gonna start charging you more. I swear, I, I've, I know for a fact, well, I don't wanna say no for a fact, but I'm pretty sure I've gotten bid much higher when they see the car. So I purposely try to keep it away. I don't let contractors see it. Preferably no one knows you, you got the car. But uh, yeah, that, that's bad. That's bad to pull up there. Yeah, what he's seeing though is correct. Like it, whether you're going, you know, uh, if you're buying, making a big purchase and people can see your car, they're going to try, they're going to know you have money and not really try to work with you. I think the same thing can be said with dating. If you, if you present with your money, if you, you know, if you present with having a lot of money your, through your car, through your, your jewelry. Now, some guys don't care because they look, I ain't giving her no money anyway. That's fine. But if you're serious about somebody, you want somebody who's going to like you for you and not what you have. Um, and I know some men, they feel like if they don't present with that money, they maybe lack, I don't know, I'm going to say the confidence or they lack the confidence that a woman, especially today's modern woman, will even want to uh, deal with him. But then I say, do you really want to deal with a woman like that? Which is probably why a lot of men get passports and try to meet women from other countries who have, who are not so, it's, they, is a man here that's average is considered high value in other countries, especially women who come from like poor economic uh, circumstances. And they value that man much more than he would here. And so a lot of women get mad and say, oh, she's going to do, she's going to leave you. She's going to do this. She's going to do that. If you go get a woman from another country. But the reality is, you know, what do you expect men to do? If they can't find a woman here that values them and they can't find what they want as far as looks and, and, and their values, they got to like, I, listen, go go find love where you can. That's this that's long that's my that's my philosophy. Sorry. A lot of stuff, huh? Mm -hmm. I think we can go this way. Who walks around like that? They're they're very it's like they're attached. Uh it's like they're it's like at this point they're almost conjoined. Like it would make the other person feel uncomfortable just how like grabby they are in the other person. Maybe that's just me. Yes. 
Hi. Oh, hi. Welcome to the store. Thank you very much. What are you guys looking for? Oh, that's Timothy Alton in the background. I love it. He, he is fantastic for furniture. If you ever want really cool designs, Timothy Alton. He actually gave me the inspiration for a lot of the uh, pieces that I have here. I don't want to say him personally. I don't know the guy. But I love his aesthetic. And, uh, yeah, so the black walls, like kind of, kind of this sort of industrial, fancy look. I love his uh, his whole design. We are. Side note, I have two of those lamps that Graham ha has. I don't know if he actually has the ones from Restoration Hardware, but they're actually uh, for, for, for Teasy, for Teasy lights. I think I'm saying it right. But they're old Hollywood lighting type of, y'all don't care. Yeah, y'all are not into interior design. Let's keep going. <laughs> Our, uh, should be closing on a house any day now awesome. and moving. She just came to America. Welcome. Wow, that's, a, that's <laughs> a big deal. He's given a lot of information to the salesperson here who's uh, basically just wants to get unload some of this furniture. And he's like, yeah, we just bought a house. We're getting married. Doesn't matter. How many square feet is your house? What spaces do you need? That's it. Yeah, a big step. So that's now it. you're going to be living together yeah. and... Mm -hmm purchasing a house. Why is it her business that they're living together now? Uh, I don't know. Th th to me, this seems way too personal for a uh, for furniture. I don't know. So I'll bring you over to All this right. area of the store. See, look at this. They're, why are they like hugging onto each other? Okay, so I can see that probably Graham is not a person that's into PDA. I, I actually think that's a good sign. Her hugging on him, her touching on him. I know for me, if I'm into a man like that, I'm touching all on you. Like when we go places, I'm just I'm just that kind. Like I I want to touch you. Like I have a heart. I don't want to be detached from you. So I actually think this is a good sign that she is hugged up on him like this. So Graham may not like the touch, but I know a lot of men would. All the time. I mean, can, can there not be any sort of separation? I feel like they're just making making everything uncomfortable. I'm uncomfortable now. Kind of take a look. Or By the way, those mirrors are so cool. Unfortunately, they're like five thousand, six thousand dollars. If you want to buy one of those infinity mirrors, ask me how I know. I thought they were so neat, but yeah, too expensive. You'll have to see if you guys have similar tastes. Yeah. Right? In furniture. Well, in a lot of things, right? Oh, what? Again, this. First of all. They're way too touchy-feely. They're volunteering way too information, and the salesperson is uh, way too invested, I think, in their in their marriage already. What is that, animal? This. This? Yeah. I bet it's probably um, sea sponge. <gasps> you know you know what sea sponge is? Yes. She, yeah, she's not stupid. <laughs> Do you know what a sea sponge is? Yes, we've all seen SpongeBob. We know what a sea sponge is. Oh, look over there, that's Patrick dried up and dead. Anyway, they try to sell these things and they're so ridiculously expensive. They look cool, but I bet this thing would be like five, six hundred dollars. Like why? Why? For a, a dead sponge. Sea sponge. You know what I do for fun? I get one of those like the, the sink sponges and put that in there instead. Save the money. I watch Bob Sponge. Yeah, his kids watch SpongeBob too. Do either of you have expensive taste? Oh my god. Me? I or he? I don't have. I don't know. Of course she does. <laughs> Why is she laughing? Why couldn't they answer that? So I could tell just by their body language. Did you see like he was kind of like that and she's like, me? I don't think so. Like you could tell she has expensive taste. Like, I, like she's with him because he has resources. Now she may love him, but she also is not gonna be living in a cardboard box with this man. She likes expensive stuff. No problem with it, because I like expensive furniture. I'm not into expensive bags and shoes and clothes and all that. Well, sometimes shoes. But I'm way more into furniture. So Graham, putting down that sponge that's $500, I would be all on something like that just because I'm, I'm into, that's just my thing. But yeah, you can tell she's, she wants that, that cash. I feel like that's not, a, that's not a bad thing. If he has expensive taste, then I, I feel like people would be like, oh yeah, great, he's got good taste. But if she has expensive taste, it's like, oh no, no, don't do that, she has expensive taste. Just to answer the question. So why are you giving me a credit card? <laughs> I thought I could trust you. I learned. Oh no, they're starting off already, what happened? I hate to say it, but it just seems like a dynamic of like a, a, a father and a daughter. Th that's the vibes it's given. So, uh-oh, okay, so we're starting to see some trouble now. So it looks like this man has probably led with money, and 
she is expecting him to keep putting out. But look, look at this. She's not responsible with money. So something happened where he gave her a credit card and then he had to take it away. This is getting spicy. Oh, Lord. Mm -hmm. Me here that, uh, you know, he's got to watch her spending. He's got to make sure that uh, she's not going too crazy. He's asking her what a sponge is. I mean, it's just weird. I wouldn't say it's like father or daughter. I, I think she is younger. And so, and she, you know, depending on her background, she probably is not used to having that amount of money. So somebody who's not, finan doesn't have financial acumen, you need to put stops and limits on them. I, grown women here in their 40s, 50s, 60s, and beyond overspend constantly and their husband or man need to take away their credit card. So I don't, I don't necessarily say that's father daughter. I just think uh, women are the biggest consumers of, 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 of everything. Okay. Uh, well, not everything, but most things we're the biggest spenders. So he's probably, you know, needs to control that or they're going to run out of money. I don't think it's father or daughter. I just think, you know, she is young, so generally younger people are more fi financially irresponsible. And plus, she doesn't really probably have to see the bills or make the money. So when money is just given to you and she's like, here's a credit card, you know, buy, buy what you need, buy what you want, you don't think about, oh, how much this is going to add up? Do I have enough to pay it off? It's just spend because it's there. So it looks like he needs to get her a financial class. Even that won't help, but he probably needs to keep tabs on her throughout their whole relationship. Like you that. wanted to just purchase the whole thing as is. It's yeah. about thirteen, fourteen thousand. Oh man, that that's the thing with these furniture places. Why is it so much? Fourteen thousand dollars? Buy a car for fourteen grand. You you can't drive a couch. You could find a very similar couch online. I bet for two grand, and even two grand. I mean, that, that's a you know decently priced couch. But uh, yeah, with with some design like this, why fourteen grand? Juliana, do you like that one? Mm -hmm. I love this. What do you like about I, it? It looks stained. It looks like you just have his kids play around on a white couch, play with markers, and it look the same as this. I have to be honest, that couch is ugly, so I'm with him with that. But y'all don't know. Furniture, if you, listen, if you make a certain amount of money, if you make millions of dollars a year, $14,000, or if you make a million dollars a year, $14,000 for a couch is not a lot of money. It is to an average person. But it seems as though if they're shopping in this place, I'm assuming he has that kind of money. Plus, with that car that he has, spending that much on a couch that you're going to use every day is not a lot. I know to some people it seems like it, but you have to think about it relatively. I'm just trying to justify expensive furniture, y'all. Sorry. You just have to think about, like, down the road, are you going to still love this in five years? I don't know. That's what I wonder how she'll feel about me in five years. Ooh. <laughs> Maybe. Okay. Is that a joke? I feel like that's that's not something you joke about. Like, I feel like in healthy relationships, like, you don't joke about the other person not being into you five years from now. I think he's worried about that. And, and that's concerning to me, that he feels like, uh, you know, she could often leave in five years and they're getting married. Okay, now we are starting to see some really bad signs. Why is she doing, like, why is he worried? What has happened? We are starting to see some cracks below the surface that maybe she's said that, you know, she can go find another man, she can go get somebody else, and he's worried. He looks very worried that she will leave him. This is not good. I mean, who, I don't know. Ooh, it's getting real spicy. I, I could already see just, it, it's him that's making me more uncomfortable than her. I hate to say it. I've been very fortunate that I've had some success in life, but it doesn't mean I'm not flipping about my money. I'm not flipping about what I spend my money on, and we have to decide if it's really the right use of our money. It is uh, It is quite expensive. Uh, I guess we can think Wait, about it. I think we can, can look more. Yeah, we'll keep looking. No. Oh, you see her face? Because he doesn't want to spend money on that couch, she's not here for it. Guys, this is not a good sign. If you're meeting a woman, if it's like a the uh, passport type situation, that is not good. You got to pick up on these micro uh, cues. And this is for any woman, but especially her, ooh.
This is giving me gold digger vibes for real. It's like she's disappointed he's not going to spend this money. Um, he even says it's our money. So he's already including her in things like it's their money, but she don't look happy. Why is she fed up with that? See, imagine if he's trying to lure her in here and be like, oh, look at how much money I have. I got this car, this and that. So she arrives here thinking he has all this money and spending it. And Mila is like, no, actually, we're not going to spend that. Oh, that's too much money. Uh, let's wait on that. Why is he showing her a $14,000 couch with zero intention of buying a $14,000 couch? Don't take her to what looks to be HD Buttercup if you're not going to buy anything at HD Buttercup. Go somewhere else. Take her to Ikea. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Can I have coffee? Yeah. There's a coffee shop. Why does she need her permission to buy a coffee? Just, you know, oh man, this whole dynamic is throwing me off. That's a great chair, though. I love that chair. Not the best thing to buy right now, is it? Again, it sounds like they're having like a, like a, like a father, daughter. Okay, I'm right. I take back. Grandma's right. Like the way she's responding is not like an adult. She's looking like a spoiled child who's not getting her way. It's like, this isn't the right choice, is it? And it's like, even when she asked for coffee, can I have a donut? Can I have cotton candy? It's like, if something is, man, bro, I hate to say it. He's, I don't know. I don't, hmm. I think he's, I think he's in for one with this. She's already showing signs that she's for the gold streets. Mm -mm -mm. Talk like, hey, listen, honey, uh, you, you saw that's not a good thing to buy right now, right? Like finances. So we're going to add this up and uh, subtract it from the bank account. You, you know what a number is, right? Like, you know, the, the big numbers, yeah, we're going to take that down and then you have less numbers. It's like, you know, I don't get why he's treating her like this. The two of you discussed like finances at all and like. We haven't not not we haven't yet really talked a lot about finances, shared finances, and, um, no, <laughs> no. Terrible, terrible. Why would you be getting married to someone you haven't talked finances with? I feel bad for her. It, it seems like she has no idea. Yeah, I, I, look at her face the whole time about money. I don't know what is going on. Either he gave, something happened where he gave her some money or get, trusted her with a credit card and she was irresponsible with it and he probably withheld the money. So now everything she wants to buy, she has to ask permission for it. And she does not look happy. And this is a beautiful girl. And then he's kind of dancing around it. Like he just sounds irresponsible. Like if you're going to bring a woman here and marry her, you, you like, he just is like, well, we have like something. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. He's not on, he, he's not, he's not handling his business. I'm sorry. He's not like some, not, this the something in the buttermilk the grandmother you say something something wrong something is in the something going on in the buttermilk yeah what she's getting into and he has meanwhile all the experience of uh you know probably handling these situations in the past and uh yeah and she i feel bad for her i know you're me sometimes i mean yeah about what you know credit cards and well yeah, you know, I was a little upset about the spending on the car, you know. Uh, what is what does he expect, though? Let's be real, okay? He's giving a 23-year-old access to a credit card with without talking about her expectations of personal finance, money, any of this stuff. He's basically handing, uh, you know, a very dangerous item to someone who might not be able to handle it properly. Of course, I would, I, unfortunately, that's on him. He can't just be given a credit card to someone he doesn't fully trust and know like that. And I, not and that doesn't necessarily excuse her going spending on the credit card, but, but probably she just doesn't know any better, and that's on him. Roughly a month ago, Juliana bought an automobile on my credit card. I'm happy to help her, of course, but... Wait, 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 did he say... She went out and bought an automobile, a car, on his credit card? Who goes and buys a car on a credit card? Oh, she tripping. She tripping on that. But he's tripping. Why, why is he still keeping? Well, I know why he's still keeping her. But And she went and bought a car, but maybe, okay, maybe the excuses, maybe in her country, that's how people do things. Maybe in Brazil. Anybody who's Brazilian, let me know. I'm here in Florida. I'm surrounded by beautiful Brazilian women and men. 
And so, <laughs> so, so you guys tell me, is this how it's done? You buy things with, but and I guess here you could buy a car on a credit card. But she made a purchase like that without telling him. But because he wouldn't give her a car. You see how there's some, this buttermilk is, oh, y'all. Ooh, spicy. Credit card. I'm happy to help her, of course. But why the f would you buy an automobile within weeks of when you're coming to America? Wait, so she used his credit card to buy an Automo oh shit. First of all, I didn't know you could buy a, a, a car with a credit card. That that changes everything. Unless she did that in Brazil. That's the only thing I could think of. And then she moved here. And he's like, why did you buy a car there if you just moved here? Most likely she did that to give the car to somebody else. Ooh, Graham got on his inspected gadget glasses. Does she have a man back in Brazil that she bought that car for? And she's finessing? Home, big homie right here. See, now something is not, mmm, ooh. ooh. Uh, maybe family or something like that. I didn't know if, he, if he's a workout. The process was so long. And like, was, can I say, it's stressful. And I, I thought it was never gonna happen. And I just bought a car. Oh, man, so she didn't know if he was going to marry her or not. Uh, so she figured, well, at least if he doesn't marry me, I'm going to get a car. <laughs> that's a that's a fair trade off. But at least put a limit on the credit card, right? Like, like keep the limit at like three grand. So that way, if it hits three grand, you, you kind of know. Just I don't know. To me, this seems like she just wanted to get a car out of it. Yeah, it seems like so she wasn't interested, even though, you know, how long, in him, because she's saying the process took a long time. I, I'd be interested to see how long it actually took. Like, was she expecting it in like just a couple of months? Something about this is not sitting right, where she's thinking, well, if he's going to take this long, I'm going to get what I came for anyway. I'm going to get the car or whatever it is I want anyhow. I mean, clearly, she's not with this man for his looks. I mean, let's just all call, call a spade a spade. I mean, he's, I mean, okay. So this, this, this is interesting. To him, I, I don't know what's going on with him. He should know better. Wasn't a lot of money for Michael, but for me, any money coming is helping me, you know? You know, I promised I was gonna help no matter what. Oh, that's not a good, that's not a good excuse. Oh, it's not a lot of money to him, but to me, it's a lot of money. That, that doesn't justify it though, regardless of if it's a lot of money. It could be $10 if you're taking that from him and, and you're doing something he wouldn't be happy with with his money. That's, the, that's not. Yeah, I gotta call it. She, it, it, she scammed, she stole from him. She stole from him and he's still choosing to bring her here. Maybe he's trying to give her a chance, but clearly even the way she's presenting things she's talking about, she, she, she wants that Dogecoin. She wants the, is Dogecoin's even still around anymore, but she, she looking for that dollar. And I said, maybe she came from poor circumstances, but it's still, just because you come from poor circumstances doesn't mean you're an immoral person. Her taking that money, knowing, she even said it. She admitted, well, she thought it wasn't going to happen, so I might as well get a car out of it, basically, is what she's saying. That shows low morals, low character. You're setting yourself, he, he's setting himself up. Not good. I just see this thing going downhill. Usually, I feel like if I watch these episodes, you could kind of get a sense of like, yeah, they're probably going to try to work things out. This one, I just see no hope for. Unfortunately, it seems like, after his divorce, and again, I'm just speculating here. This is uh, Graham Stephan relationship advice. It feels to me like after his divorce, he wants to just basically get you know some young, good-looking girl that he could uh, you know have a little control over. I mean, that seems to be what's going on here. But the whole dynamic between them is very much, I think, extremely unhealthy. What's the car doing now? Just probably sitting there at your house, right? No, uh, is this in? For a cab. For a cab? Yeah. Who's using My sister it? uses it. She's driving it as a cab? To make money? Mm-hmm. Aw, oh, man, why couldn't they just sell the car and... Her sister's not using that for a cab. Her man back home is. Let's just call it what it is. Give him his money back. It's not like, oh, I bought a car, can't sell it ever again. 
I don't know. The whole thing, I had a feeling she was buying this for her sister to begin with. She's buying it for family, and they're going to use that car. But but now he's basically just giving her family money. I don't know how much that car is worth. My guess, it's probably a ten to $15,000 car. That, that's probably my guess. I'm so stupid. We're done. We're done. moving on. Maybe I'm not seeing what the reality was, but um, it was hurtful. I felt that she was making a choice where she was deciding she didn't have enough faith and confidence in our relationship at the time. Yeah, so what does that tell you? When she's not sure about something, she's just going to take while she still can. Because what's the downside for her? Oh, well, I don't get married. I got the car. But if we do get married, then uh, the car's not going to matter anyway. What? It, this is awful. And she wasn't so sure this was ever going to happen. Let's go see what the comments have to say about this. Sometimes the smartest thing to do is to play dumb, and she knows it. Well, you know what? Uh, you know, he's, uh, I think, maybe the naive one here. Diana says something uh, very true. She's very smart. She bought herself a car in Brazil because she was stressed. In reality, she knew she could help her family out by giving them something to do with the car. So now her sister uses it as a cab to make money for the family. Oh man, this is the textbook example of a midlife crisis. Wearing shirts that are too tight, <laughs> driving a sports car, dating a girl half his age. He is a Y'all, I didn't want to say it, but I'm like, why is my man's shirt so tight? Does he think it makes him look like more in shape? Like, I'm not trying to be funny. This man is not a, I mean, he's very, I, I don't know. I'm not, listen, he, she is above his pay grade in looks. Let's just be honest. And he's, and he's not in that in shape. He's not like a big guy or out of shape. I don't think he looks bad, but like, but like, I was thinking the same thing. I was wondering if anybody was going to call that out. But anyway, guys, I think. I think that's it for this video. Let me know if you want me to review more videos like this. I actually want to do a little bit more with finances and other areas, not just this, but money related, relating to relationships and, and family dynamics um, and, and all that good stuff. But make sure you guys subscribe. Also, the like button and follow me on Instagram. The link's below at Mel underscore DA underscore King. And your girl, see you in the next one. Bye.